There's a couple different ways. The first way to do it is basically just to move this constant to the other side of the equation by subtracting 10 from both sides. So we have y minus 10 equals x squared plus 2x plus blank. Okay, so here's where we're going to complete the square. Now when the leading coefficient, the number in front of the x squared, is a positive 1, it's very easy to do this completing the square process. And the other two we're going to do one where there's not a leading coefficient of 1, and it'll be a little bit more challenging, and I'll show you how that works. But the first thing is you want to look at this middle coefficient here, this number in front of the x to the left of the x. You want to take half of that number and square it. So half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Okay, some people write this as b over 2, the quantity squared, because this is like ax squared plus bx plus c, so you're taking half of b, okay, and then squaring it. Now the thing is, is this is an equation, right? Out of thin air, I just put 1 on the right side of this equal sign. So to keep this balanced, if I add 1 here, I have to add 1 to the other side as well, right, to keep it balanced. So we have y minus 9 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now we've set this up to be a perfect square. So when we factor this, this is going to be x plus 1, the quantity squared. Some students have a little bit of a challenge with this, uh, just with factoring, but I'll give you a little hint. It's always going to be half of this middle coefficient, okay, this number that's right here. If this was x squared minus 2x plus 1, it'll be x minus 1. It'll be half of that that middle coefficient. And then we're just going to bring down the y minus 9. And then last step is we're just going to add 9 to both sides. So we have y equals x plus 1 squared plus 9. Now we know what the vertex is. It's going to be negative 1, see the opposite of 1, comma 9. That's our vertex. And you can see our a value is actually positive 1, so we know our parabola is opening up like that. But uh, you can check out some of my other videos about graphing given the vertex form. But here we're just writing it into the vertex form by completing the square. So let's go to example number 2. So now this one's a little bit more challenging because of that leading coefficient of 3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, okay, just to get the, the 1 out of the way there. But then what we're going to do with this 3 is we're actually going to factor out the 3, okay, like so. Now what we want to do is we want to take half of this number in front of the x, half of this uh, middle coefficient. So half of 4 is 2, and then we square that, which is 4. Okay, now it just happens to be a coincidence that, you know, this is 4 and that's 4. But you take half the middle coefficient, whatever that is, you square that, and you put it there. Now here's the thing. Because this 4 is in parentheses, we actually have to distribute the 3 times the 4. That's 12. So out of thin air, we're putting 12 on the right side of the equation. So to balance that, we have to add 12 to the left side of the equation, right? So we want to keep it balanced. So this is y plus 11 equals 3. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to factor this quantity in the parentheses. And remember how it factors. It factors as x plus 2, the quantity squared. It's going to be half of that middle coefficient. If this was minus 4x, then this would be minus 2, right? And you can double check this by foiling it out, x plus 2 times x plus 2. The last step is we just want to move this 11 over here to the other side by subtracting 11 from both sides. And there you go, that's your equation. You can see your vertex is going to be at negative 2 comma negative 11. The 3 is actually going to stretch the graph. It's opening up, it's going to be a little bit narrower. But this is going to be your vertex where the graph changes direction, right, or bends.